A five-foot Finnish farmer sits atop of a hill with a deadly sniper rifle in his hand. He sees the faces of the men below, men who would soon be dead at his hands. These Russian men don't see the farmer, but they know him as the White Death. The farmer shoots round after round and kills 25 men in a single day. But let's back up. Exactly who is the farmer slash the White Death? The name is Simo Haiwa, and long after his death, he remains the world's deadliest sniper. This title of his is well earned. He killed over 505 men during a single winter battle between Finland and the Soviet Union. So who was Simo Haiwa? In short, he was born on December 17, 1905 to Juhos and Katrina Haiwa in Finland. His birth area was in the old Finnish region of Karelia, which is now actually a Russian territory. As previously mentioned, he was a farmer by profession, and his hobbies included skiing, hunting, and shooting, basically an early life training for what was to come for him. War was to come on to him. Simo fought for Finland against the Soviet Union in what history refers to as the Winter War. This conflict occurred in the winter of 1939 and 1940. The war broke out when Simo was just 33 years old and celebrated his 34th birthday on the Kola battlefield. He served a small amount of time by comparison with other members of the army, a mere 98 days. Well, the war lasted only 105 days, so unfortunately for Simo, he could not see its end as he was injured and in the hospital at the time. So during his 98-day rulership and reign of terror, Simo wasn't heard or seen by the enemy, but he was continuously killing Russian soldiers with deadly accuracy, once killing 25 people in one day. With snipers presenting such high-value targets, Simo's deadly reputation quickly reached the Russian front line. They referred to him as the White Death. One time after Simo had once again killed an enemy sniper with a single shot, the Russians, in turn, tried to kill him by shooting indirect fire, a motor bombardment very close to his firing position. Incredibly so, Simo was not killed. Actually, he wasn't even wounded and made it out without a scratch. On another occasion, an artillery shell landed near his firing position and tore apart the back of his coat. Simo survived and suffered scratches less vicious than that of a cat claw. Of course, these are miraculous recoveries, but he wouldn't have been scared, right? Nope. For a soldier who spent so much time on the front line, Simo reported that he was never scared. He always treated this insanely dangerous job as he treated one of his hobbies, hunting. As in hunting and sniping, he was always thinking of new ways to remain hidden and fool the opposite party before pouncing. He developed clever techniques, such as pouring some water into the snow in front of him so that the sniper blast would not expose his location by disturbing the very light snow. He also became a master of using fire, smoke, and even sounds to cover up his position without changing the actual location. Even more incredible was the fact that since maps were scarce during the war, Simo had to rely on the fragile human memory to find the best hiding positions. His gun didn't even have a telescope attached. It was an M2830, one that he owned before the war. So even though it was a basic weapon, Simo had become its master over the years. But still, no good fighter goes into the battle without preparation, and Simo was no different. In fact, Simo's skill was compound and complemented by the extensive preparations for shooting. During the night, he would often visit his favorite firing positions, making whatever preparations and improvement he saw fit. Simo's behavior was described as obsessive. He cleaned his weapon much more than other soldiers and performed maintenance functions twice, before and after completing a mission. But why do you have to maintain a gun so much? Well, if you try to fight without maintaining your gun in negative 20 degrees Celsius temperature on the Finnish winter, your gun will definitely get jammed and you will definitely get shot in the face. One question comes to mind, though. Surely, Simo could have done more damage with a new telescopic sight gun instead of his dingy old M2830, but Simo preferred the reliability of the model and the consistency of its shot. He could also rapidly adjust its range. One strange myth that surrounds snipers was that they climb trees to shoot the enemy. Simo actually laughed when he asked if that was true. He said that it would just make it difficult to keep a steady aim at the enemy. But if he was ever discovered, there would be no escape route. Simo used overhanging branches for cover, which provided more protection and allowed him to keep a steady aim. When you do something from a very young age, the activity becomes second nature to you. For Simo... It was going on regular hunting trips in the forest of Finland. 
He often hunted timid and small birds in forests, the kind that flew away with the slightest sounds or movements. As a hunter, everything depends on the situation and the terrain, so Simo developed sharp vision and the ability to spot and recognize targets. There are no foolproof methods in hunting or sniping, and each situation is unique. Simo knew that even after shooting the first shot, a hunter must be able to observe the impact, as the victim would surely try to escape from sight if the first shot was not lethal. Any animal would try to defend itself against the enemy until its dying breath. Unfortunately, this grim reality applied to the battlefield as well, and Simo left none of his victims alive. Of course, all these skills were essential in making Simo the world's deadliest sniper, but the one skill the other snipers did not have was the frightening degree of accuracy Simo had while estimating distances. In most cases, his estimates were almost perfect. When he checked the distance afterwards, the difference would be only three or two steps. Even horrible weather conditions weren't a damper on his morale. As a young man, he had learned to estimate the effects of wind and rain on shooting in the forest. So it's no surprise that Simo's unique character and lifetime preparation were a couple of nightmares for the Soviet troops in the unfamiliar winter forests of Finland. Well, until he was wounded by an explosive bullet during a Russian attack, he lapsed into a coma from which he did not awaken until a week later, by which time the treaty had already been signed. Following his injury, Simo suffered facial scarring and near constant pain for many years. Well, what to do now that everything was taken care of? Simo went back to his farm. His war exploits had been legendary in Finland, and he had become somewhat of a celebrity. But due to his facial scarring, he preferred his own company and even died alone in the Kimai Institute for Injured Veterans in 2002. A really sad end for a supposedly terrifying shooter. What are your thoughts on the life of Simo? Please comment below.